Hello again and welcome to chapter 11. This time we talk about hurricanes. Yes, we rev up the excitement a little bit this week and talk about some of the big things that hit the United States and have caused some devastating issues and most notably recently uh, what we had happen with Hurricane Sandy and it actually became an extra tropical cyclone Sandy of extraordinary measures when it moved in across the New Jersey shore. More about that here in a second. Tropical weather of course is uh, always in the tropics, basically 25 to 30 degrees north and south of the equator is where we consider the tropical region. Uh, noon sun is always high. Seasonal temperature changes are very small uh, and mainly associated with uh, what we call the wet and dry seasons. Uh, daily heating and humidity equals cumulus clouds. Afternoon thunderstorms are very common. Non-squall cluster-like thunderstorms, tropical squall lines occasionally. And then we have the associated tropical waves that occasionally do turn into tropical storms and hurricanes. Uh, seasons defined by precipitation as again opposed to temperature. No great temperature changes, but definitely changes in the precipitation and uh, how that varies throughout the year. Here's a look off the African coast, and this is what we call a tropical wave. We have a dashed line here, this represents the wave. And unlike the northern hemisphere where they move from west to east, these move from east to west, and they often come off the African continent. And it's very interesting that the shape of the continent and where it's located actually helps trigger these waves to form off the coast. And you get divergence ahead of them, and then convergence on the backside, so converging air on the backside is where we have the showers and thunderstorms. So as opposed to a front, you get the clear air in, in the front of these fronts, and on the back side is where you have the storms. That's opposite of what we tend to have when we get the uh, systems that move through the westerlies here in the northern hemisphere. The anatomy of a hurricane it is an intense storm of tropical origin with winds greater than 64 knots. Typhoon, cyclone, tropical cyclone, these are all names for uh, what we call a hurricane as well, just in different parts of the earth. They're all the same storm. There is an eye, there is an eye wall, there are spiral band, rain bands, anticyclonic divergence aloft, and then latent heat is the heat engine that drives these. It's the evaporation off the ocean, and then you get that evaporating moisture into the air, and then when it recondenses, it releases, releases a ton of energy into the atmosphere. Here's what we're talking about. We get these spiral bands that spiral around, in this case in the northern hemisphere, again we work, rotate uh, counterclockwise, and the eye of the storm is in the middle, and then the eye wall surrounds that. And we get some rain fee areas, of course, in between the bands of rain, but there can be some pretty big thunderstorms around these as well. Here's a cross-sectional diagram. We have the eye wall with rising air, except right in the center you get sinking air. That's why you have a clear band right in the middle. You get this subsiding air. You get all this rising air around the outside. Then the outflow is actually anticyclonic. So the whole storm is rotating clockwise, counterclockwise. And then the cirrus bands rotate the opposite way uh, up on the up, upper part. So it's a very complex uh, storm system basically over the ocean. And another look at it here, we break it down in piece by piece. You get the inflow here. You get the eye and rotating around that. And then the rising air in the center around the outside edge of the wall. And then the sinking air. And of course, sinking air between the rain bands as well. So what goes up must come down. You must equalize and balance out the pressure areas here. And that's why you get the sinking area in so, so many places. Then some of that rising air blows out the top as well. And again, that's in a uh, form of a more of a uh, anti-cyclonic uh, rotation or clockwise rotation that looks like from the top. But the actual storm is, again, rotating counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere. Of course, in the southern hemisphere, south of the equator, it does just the opposite. Here's a beautiful picture from out the nose of a plane uh, in penetrating the eye wall of a hurricane. We're looking at part of the wall ahead. This is the center, almost a clear area in the center. Sometimes you do get sunshine uh, below the eye wall at the surface. Uh, but a beautiful picture penetrating a hurricane eye wall. Here's a look at a radar three-dimensional image of what we have, and these are what we call hot towers. These hot towers are over areas of warmer ocean, and they produce quite a bit of instability, and the result is very strong thunderstorms or rain bands around them. And this is of Hurricane Katrina. Here's New Orleans up here to the northwest, and the storm was making a beeline, and at this point it was a Hurricane Category 3 in the Gulf of Mexico. 
hurricane formation and dissipation, the right environment, tropical waters, light winds, uh, generally 26 and a half degrees or 80 degrees Fahrenheit or warmer um, provides those water the sea surface temperatures and generally June through November. Surface convergence, some sort of tropical wave disturbance that converges the air and causes it to form. Generally the Coriolis effect 5 degrees to 20 degrees north and south of latitude, uh, the developing regions. And of course the developing storm cluster of thunderstorms around a rotating low pressure system and of course the release of all that latent heat and divergence aloft. And again you must have weak winds in the upper part of the atmosphere as well, light winds throughout the environment in order for them to uh, perform their duties, uh, so to speak, of releasing all that energy into the atmosphere. Here we have uh, the map of the tropical hurricanes and tropical storms as we relate to the seasons in the northern hemisphere. And June through July, not much activity. Then it picks up the end of August or beginning of August, mid-August, September, October, October, and then dies off again by November. Of course, uh, Sandy was in the end of October, sort of the tail end here of last year's hurricane season. Surface air pressure, here's what it looks like. Goes down, surface wind speed, increases, increases, and then drops off very light winds in the, in the center of the storm as we pack in. And again, we have high pressure up above with sinking air, and again, low pressure at the surface, uh, driving the upward air around the outside of the ba uh, bands of low pressure, or bands of thunderstorms. Hurricane formation and dissipation. The storm dies out. Cold water, land, these two things kill a storm. Also, another thing that kills the storms is vertical wind shear. If you get some strong wind shear, that is how we've talked about previous chapters, the winds increasing in strength with height. If you get strong winds in the upper part of the atmosphere, that will kill the thunderstorms and do just the opposite to a hurricane than it does over the northern plains when we get strong thunderstorms. Hurricane states of development, tropical disturbance, tropical depression, these are the wind speeds, tropical storm, uh, 35 to 64 knots, hurricane greater than or equal to 65 knots. Here's three or four actually stages all at the same time from satellite picture. We have a tropical disturbance coming off mid the Central America and then that moves out over the Atlantic or the Pacific here and becomes a tropical depression. Then a hurricane forms and then a tropical storm uh, as it dissipates here over the North Pacific. Some colder water temperatures and wind shear by this time have basically dissipated the storm as it continues to move northward. But all these are in a series moving to the northwest. Hurricane formation and dissipation and hurricane movement generally track west to northwest to northeast. M much variation though, a lot of uh, meandering storms. Topic, hurricanes and mid-latitude storms. Hurricane warm core uh, with a low, where mid-latitude storms like we get here in the northern hemisphere across the United States this time of year, are, or the winter seasons, are cold core and uh, they're basically a low pressure system. And Arctic hurricanes occasionally do exist, really sort of a modified system where you get cold, very, very cold air over the ocean and that it can create some very unstable conditions that much mimic a hurricane but still very level, very different system. A hurricane and upper level trough and mid-latitude cyclone are basically combined to produce that sort of situation. Here's where we have hurricanes uh, during the seasons and again uh, most hurricanes, typhoons again here over Southeast Asia, cyclones in the Australia part, south of the equator there, and then we get the hurricanes in the Pacific Ocean here off Mexico, and then the Caribbean that moves up into the United States and th through much of the Atlantic. And again, cyclones down here towards Madagascar in the southwest Alaska or uh, Africa. Again here, notice the South Atlantic is void of hurricanes, and pretty much the southeastern Pacific as well. These are due to cold air upwelling currents or cold upwelling currents that come off the coast of Africa and South America. Here's a better picture of that. Known plotted hurricane paths and strengths, sometimes making it as far as, as uh, Iceland and indeed into Britain and parts of Europe, but mostly dissipating as they move into the United States and through the Central Atlantic. Big swath of tropical activity in here in Southeast Asia again into India, and a few even have poked their way into Iran in some of the desert regions of East Africa. And again down into South Africa and through much of Northern Australia, very common to get the hurricanes there. Here's a rare occurrence of a storm over the South Atlantic, one of maybe three tropical storms that have ever been recorded moving into uh, parts of Brazil. 
Here's a little better look at the North Atlantic early on in the season. August, most of the hurricanes here begin off tropical waves and move and sometimes clip the east coast into the Gulf of Mexico. Later on into September, very much more activity here in the Atlantic. And then as we get into the parts of North America and the Gulf of Mexico, later on things cool off over the Atlantic as we get into October. And this is, of course, where Sandy formed and moved right up along the east coast and got pulled into New Jersey as we had a, a tropical, or as a, we had a mid-latitude cyclone that buried in, into, the, or formed into that system as well. Naming hurricane and tropical storms, the process has changed over the years. Uh, basically, latitude and longitude, letters of the alphabet, uh, alphabetical female names have been added when they used to be, or they started out as female names. Now they alternate uh, female and male names in alphabetical order. Retirement, Katrina, Camille, and now Sandy has been retired because those have been storms that uh, have caused ex extreme devastation, and we no longer use those storms, those names to describe storms. Devastating windstorm, surge, and flooding. Now here's some of the things that go on with the flooding, devastating windstorms, surge, and flooding, high tides, uh, things like that, all very common with storms, uh, of tropical storms. Here's what we have, the strongest winds are definitely, on the, at least in the northern hemisphere, are on the eastern side of the storms, because especially generally the storm is moving to the north. You have 79 mile hour winds or 79 winds, and then you add in the speed of the storm, and it continues to accelerate those winds as well. Here's what happens at the coast. You have a nice sunny day, a storm moves inland, and you get a storm surge. These can be up as high as 20 to 25 feet with some of the most extreme storms when you get a Category 5 storm and we certain, see certain conditions along the coast like we saw with Sandy, that can lead some, to some devastating conditions. Just know where these charts are. They are in your book, the Saffir Simpson Scale and Hurricane Damage Potential. Uh, here's one we can have with that and some descriptions here. And then, of course, uh, greater breakdown of the wind speeds uh, along with that Saffir Simpson Scale. Those categories 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 5 is where we were at with Hurricane Katrina and very few storms of that strength have reached the coast. Again, here's what we have, a normal high tide, category one, we get a four foot rise, category three, you get a 12 foot rise, and up to a category five, sometimes up to a 20 foot or even higher sea rise when you combine that with high tide. Here's the number of storms and the strength of those storms as they've reached the coast of the United States. Interesting to note, category three is a very common storm. There have been 55 of those. This has been since 1900, and 15 of those have been recorded at four and just three at a Category 5, so very rare when we get a Category 5 storm reaching the shore. Some notable storms, Camille in 1969, Hugo 1989, Andrew 92, Ivan 2004, Katrina 2005, and of course now Sandy in 2012. Here's a look at Hugo, and that was in 1988, one of the first big satellite pictures of a hurricane hitting the coastline in South Carolina. Here's a radar picture, this is of Andrews that moved across Hurricane, or across the uh, Keys just off the Florida, Miami coast, and uh, made some major damage, of course, in around uh, Miami. This is what some of the homes look like. Some of the trailer homes were pretty much wiped out here. And some of the coastal storms that caused the damage. This was one building here just before the storm, and this is afterwards. And you can see the extreme damage uh, with those storms. Here's uh, New Orleans, and this is Hurricane Katrina, just after it made landfall. And, of course, some of the pictures during landfall that we see some boats being driven down Main Street and some of the uh, suburbs of New Orleans. And the day after, uh, this is what it looked like, a complete mess and a complete disaster for the area. And again, over a thousand people were killed uh, due to Hurricane Katrina hitting New Orleans. Some notable storms again, ob observation Atlantic hurricanes 2004 to 2005, abnormally warm ocean water and weak vertical wind shear allowed for a high frequency of hurricanes in 2005. Hurricane watches and warnings, here's what we look at. We have a watch and a warning issued here and on the edges of that we have hurricane watches because there can be variable abilities in the path of the storms. And again uh, projected to Hurricane Katrina, and the potential tracks and the protected path uh, is pretty much where it took uh, with that storm. That's basically a look at hurricanes for this uh, chapter. Have a great time and if you have any questions again be sure to email me.